Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my series review for Mashi and Sentai Kara Major. And if you couldn't tell by all of my reviews all year, I just hated this series. Worse than Jew Ranger, worse than Forze, worse than Geo. Just kidding. Kara Major was fantastic. It was such a huge surprise. Not like I was expecting it to be bad or anything, but everything just about the initial build up to it for me just felt so like, yeah, it's a new Sentai, I'm looking forward to it, whatever. And I didn't expect it to become one of my favorite series of all time. So let's talk about this. If you know my series reviews, they're kind of a little bit rambly with a loose structure, so I'm gonna talk about the plot first, the characters, the designs, and then, of course, a little bit of a wrap-up. So just to talk about the plot, within the plot, I'm also going to talk about episode structure a little bit, too, because I think Kara Major had really good episode structure that helped with the plot in general, because I think they started off on the absolute right foot, because we did get an episode zero, which effectively acted like a more traditional pilot, which was great, because it allowed things to breathe, it helped me get into the world and get invested in the world much easier right off the bat. Even if episode one wasn't bad, and they eventually did explain everything you got from episode zero, but going from episode 0 and 1, it was just great right off the bat because they took the time for you to get to know the characters a little bit and get to know the world. And that was one of my favorite things about the series overall, is I think they did a really good job of fleshing out the world and the mythology and the mysteries and the stories. Like, that's been a common complaint I've had in a lot of modern Sentai for almost five years now, definitely as long as I've been doing series reviews, is the, the Sentai series will often lay down mythology and powers and worlds that I'm very interested in learning more about, whether it's Juoger or Key Ranger or even Lupat. And then either they never answer them or expand upon them, or the answer is like, our powers come from Earth's smile. I'm like, shut up, that's not a real answer. Kara Major, right from the get-go, they told you how the powers worked, where they come from, the mythology, and that was the through line throughout the series right to the finale, uh, when they answered what happened with Kara May Red's powers and how the master worked. It was all answered and fleshed out, and it not only made the show more interesting, but it helped me become more invested, and that I, I had a confidence that they would answer these questions. And that started from the get-go, and I think Kara Major had an excellent pacing. I don't want to say it was a really fully serialized series, some Sentai are more serialized than others, some are more episodic, most sit in between. I would put Kara Major somewhere in that in-between scale, but not a single episode I felt was really wasted. I could probably count on my hand, like on one hand, I mean, I could count on one hand the amount of episodes that I would consider useless to the overall story in terms of something that was maybe skippable, but even those episodes I didn't hate. I think I maybe had three or four episodes that I didn't care for so much, but even those I didn't hate. They were usually entertaining, because almost every episode either contributed something in some small way to the plot, to learning about a character, to developing a character, or they were just straight up entertaining. I can't think of very many Sentai series where I almost liked every single episode, and that was something great about the story pacing of it, and it always made it feel like it was moving very nicely. And I never felt like things were too rushed, I felt like we flowed from one thing to the other, to the next I mean, and I think we were continuously always fleshing out the characters, and expanding on the world, and the mythology, and the villains plots, and I think they did a really good job with it, and I was thoroughly invested in it. I think what helped with that that, though. I did find the story to be generally interesting and well written in my opinion, but I think what helped with that is that it had a great cast, which I'll get into when I talk about the characters too, but I thought they had a great likable cast that made the show interesting, and like I said, they laid the groundwork so good from the beginning that the, that made it so much more interesting so that even when you hit an episode that maybe actually didn't contribute to anything and it was just kind of mildly entertaining, I just didn't mind spending time with the characters. I also loved how often, like especially in the second half I want to say, they took you by surprise surprise where you would think the episode was going to be a filler either because of how the episode started or because of the preview and then it wound up being really important or this really great amalgam of everything that made the series work like that arc where Pink went on a date and like it was kind of set up like a funny filler and you know there was some really funny interactions with the cast and you thought, oh, this is going to be a fun episode, and then it wound up being a serious, real deal episode. And so that was not only a surprise, but it made the episode or episodes this great mixture of all the things that can work about Kara Major at one time. And it was just such an overall enjoyable story and pacing for the series, which I really appreciated. As I mentioned, too, I thought they always did a good job of paying off things and keeping things going. Like, even the Garner Stones arc, which very easily could have just been used for Silver's debut arc, wound up having some importance all throughout the end of the series and I thought they always did a good job on following up on things and I didn't feel like there was anything dropped and I didn't feel like that there was times where we spent too long away from a storyline at least from my perspective I think that's another some problem that recent Sentai have had 
where they'll introduce a storyline or something and then it'll be a very unusual amount of time before we pick it up and not just pick it up and mention it. But I thought the overall pacing of the series made it enjoyable and they just did a really good job where I was really invested in the mythology and the characters because they did such a good job of laying it down and making it interesting. Now to talk about the characters, I'm going to kind of talk about this a little bit freeform, just kind of talk about them as a group. Let's start with the Rangers first, obviously. Um, I love this cast. It was probably one of my favorite casts. I think they had great chemistry. I think they did a good job of making all the characters likable and interesting on their own, but also as a group. Like I said, I just liked spending time with them, and there was so, so many episodes where there would be a story where there was a couple of them, or a bunch of them, or all of them together, I mean, and they just had a really great chemistry where you liked watching them together, but they also had good individual moments. And I love that there were certain things that I was expecting based on recent Sentai tropes that didn't end up happening. Like, for example, with Silver, one of my problems with recent Six Rangers has been that they usually kind of fade away after their initial arc, and then they just become a catchphrase or a gimmick, kind of like the male companions of Pokemon. We're like, the future is now thanks to connoisseuring, and that's like their whole character. And that's kind of what's been happening for me. And Silver had his quirky moments and stuff, but I felt that he remained an actual present character that continued to get storylines, and they continually, continuously expanded his storylines and backstory with Garza and his sister and I found him to be likable and like he wasn't just a one note like comedy bit after that and he stayed prevalent throughout the series. And then of course I really love characters like Tomateo and I, I like his development and how he was initially very apprehensive about Juru but then he learned to take a back seat but was always this really great strategist like there was always good strategies that came from him and especially in these last few episodes there was a few distinct ones that always came out of it and you know then there's Shiguru who is kind of like the stoic in a way like the stoic by the book blue type and maybe they did this from the beginning and I just didn't notice but I felt like as the show went on they really discovered his comedic talents and like there was some funny bits out of that that I always found entertaining like right through to the finale. Most of all I did want to just talk about Juru because Juru really took me by surprise. If you've been following my channel in any form you know that I'm not a fan of the eccentric crackhead red character and that's exactly what I thought Drew was going to be based on the initial trailer. I was ready to hate him but he took me by surprise and I think he's a great red. I mean first of all he didn't end up being one of the more loud reds. He was more of like an eccentric character but I think what made him work was first of all they made him feel like an actual character. So often with these types of characters they can just feel like a weird catchphrase with an air horn to your face with not a lot of substance but he felt like an actual character that grew throughout the series and I think what surprised me the most most about him that I liked the most that I don't remember seeing a lot of other Sentai series doing when they have an eccentric red is showing me why his unique personality makes him uniquely suited to be a leader because you know usually the you think of a leader you think of someone that takes charge and is good with strategy and stuff and Sentai usually doesn't have that but you don't really get a lot of reason for it in most Sentai series the main protagonist would be like peanut butter fish and they're like that's why he's leader. I'm like, why? Because he has a brain bleed? It's never explained why this other certain characters shrieking stuff into your face and saying weird things makes him ideally suited to be the leader. But with Juru, obviously there was the whole theme of inspiration. I think the theme of inspiration and creativity and shining your brightest um, and that being inspirational came through him a lot, obviously, and then that, you know, stretched out to the other characters and was a huge theme of the series which I also think really worked well for the cast and was really driven home at the end. But what it was for me was especially highlighted in the early episodes where Juru had this really great empathy where he could really see when a character was going through a struggle or characters were going through a struggle and he knew how to help them with that situation to get them back on board for the team so that the team worked well together. And I think that was really well showcased where he wasn't a traditional leader where he was like, alright guys, let's put them together. Let's you know, go do this and that and hero stuff. He would see like, oh, Sen is having trouble. You know, the, the team's not working well together right now because she's having trouble with this. But this is why she's going through this. I can see that. So I'm going to help her. And then she's going to come back and work with us. And the team's going to be a well-oiled machine. Or, you know, the team's not working well together because of this issue. How can I help everybody so that we're working together well again? And that was not only a way of making him a more fleshed out character, but made me see why he was the leader. And he was a unique type of leader. And I, I want to just give huge praise to that because they 
really took me by surprise with the character type I usually hate, and not only made me like him, but gave me good reason to. Now let's talk about the villains. I thought they had some strong villains this year. That's also been another problem I've been highlighting in recent Sentai. For me personally, I just feel like villains haven't had a lot of presence. I think it's been since Tokyujur that I felt the villains had had presence and a lot of character. And it was a little bit of a smaller group at the end of the day, but I did feel that they had a good presence from the get-go and were fairly interesting. Um, Crunchrella, I'm fine with him. Like, he was fine. He basically just served the purpose of the kind of eccentric monster maker. I was a little mixed on his redemption, but I did really like them drawing that connective thread between him and Juru both being creatives for their prospective teams, which I can't believe it took me until that episode about the Mao Rangers to realize that, but I did like that. I did like Udonna because she reminded me a lot of kind of a classic 90s Sentai villain, and she had some really great scenes near the end when you found out what she was and what her purpose was and how she felt about that in relation to the Master. But the main two were Garza, who I think was the villain of the series, the most interesting. I thought he had great presence, he was badass, and he was interesting. And I guess there was more hints at him, his like redemption and not being quite as evil than I missed, but because so often in the series when they would have flashbacks in those moments where you would often expect to see the turned hero in the past being good, it would show this moment where he was absolutely brutal. Like in this, the duel with Silver, he was ready to kill him. And so the, to me that shows like, oh man, maybe he was evil from the beginning. And I was mixed at the end when they revealed like, oh, he was brainwashed effectively. But then actually, as it progressed and the more I thought about it, it made him a very tragic figure because effectively he had all this potential and inspiration and it was taken from him. His agency was taken from him and then everything from that moment he believed was a lie. And it makes him a very tragic figure, but he got to do this one last good deed where he saved Juru. But he remained a very badass and interesting villain throughout the whole series. And he's probably one of my more favorite Sentai villains. And, and it was like a mix of cliches, but not quite cliches, which I think is one of the things Kara Major did really well across the board, both characters and episodes, is that there was very many times when they would approach a story or a character story that I thought it was going to go one way because of how many Sentai I've seen, and they would change your perspective on it, or they would twist it, it wouldn't go the way you thought in a good way. And I think Garza represents that in a lot of ways, because there was a lot of cliches wrapped in him, but he was also his own thing. Now then you have Master Yudon, who I did not expect to have a lot to say about, but he wound up being surprisingly interesting. In fact, now thinking about this for this video, I kind of wish we had more time with him, because there was actually a lot interesting about him. Because for most of the series, he just kind of sat in the background as that classic big bad. Like, just literally a villain that's big in size, and he's evil, and he's going to be the final boss. But there was some interesting stuff about him when we met him. With He had the multiple personalities, we found out Udana was an aspect of him, he had that assassin guy, he could absorb Garza. As I mentioned in my videos, there was a couple times where I was confused, I'm like, okay, are they him, or does he absorb people? And it was kind of both at the end, but in the finale, they really explained it. And as I mentioned in the finale review, I like that they gave him a little bit of backstory. He didn't just start as this random, powerful being. He worked his way up, and he manifested these other personalities as a result of his last weakness, as he calls it, of loneliness, of wanting people by him. And then he finally cut that down when he destroyed Udana. And that gave him a very human element to him, which was surprising. Like, I would have loved to explore that more. I didn't want to see him be redeemed, but I think that he had that human element of wanting this connection, but hating himself for it and striking it down made him much more interesting than just your average big bad. Not to mention the idea of this villain having multiple personalities and being able to absorb someone like Garza into that was very interesting. And I, I talked about how I don't feel the series was cut short, but that was definitely something that would have been cool to maybe explore longer if they would have introduced him as more of a main fiction early on. The only other small little thing I wanted to mention in regards to character was just a quick little blurb about the Karame Stones, mainly because there's something I found interesting, is that we just came off of Ryu Soldier, which also had a small handful of the mecha be these sort of buddy characters, and I, I enjoyed that about Ryu Soldier. I know people have mixed feelings about the buddy robot stuff, but I enjoyed that about Ryu Soldier, and I talked about a couple times during my course of discussing that series how I thought it was a missed opportunity to give all their robots personalities, because they were actual moving robots. So I found it funny to have a series where we had a personality for every robot, including the auxiliaries, when they were just these stones. And I thought it worked very well. Like, I can remember each of their personalities distinctly, and I really did feel their bond with the characters. Like I said, even the auxiliaries got unique personalities. So it's not something I wanted to spend an enormous time talking about, but I did want to give it a shout out for being an element I thought I worked 
on, or the iWork, thought it worked unexpectedly despite them literally just being stones. Now I want to talk a little bit about the designs because I really love the designs in this series. I was very okay on everything, but then as we got into the series I grew to love them. Like I love the suits. I think that if I could boil my main point for all of my thoughts on the designs down, it would be that I feel like most things feel like this great sort of almost throwback classic Sentai design with a mix of something new. And I really love the suits for that. I feel like they have this classic Sentai suit feel, but something new and sleek about them and unique with the diamond parts and silvers too. I, I roll my eyes every year when we get another gold or silver, but every year they win me over and silver was especially one of those. I still wish they would have leaned maybe towards calling them like Karamite Crystal or something, but the way the crystals were in it and the goggles and it fit his theme so well and it was just such a great suit and the power up was fine for what it was. It wasn't my favorite, but I think it worked for what it was. I pretty much loved all the mecha, you know, uh, the the general idea of the sort of glowing stones I think worked to make them feel unique, and then I liked the idea of Land and Sky Mage, that kind of made it unique as well, but when Karamajin was together, it just had such a great look of like a retro Sentai mecha, but something new. And then same thing, I love both forms of Zabiun, because they feel like almost a throwback to more retro times, and it's really cool, sleek, simple designs. Silver is probably my least favorite, but I still love it. It feels like this kind of little rock buddy, like Geode, and I really like that. And then of course you have Grateful, who I think is an amazing design. So to wrap this up, this sort of ties into, not the designs, but the things that were introduced in the series and the kind of segues into my final thoughts about Kara Major, which is, it felt like such a great classic Sentai experience, where it oddly enough was almost nostalgic in a way. It reminded me of when I first got into Sentai, when it first grabbed me and I understood why people liked it, and it felt like it was more about the story, and it more about the investment, and like in terms of the things they were introducing with the mecha and the, the weapons and the morphers or whatever, it felt like just the right amount. It didn't feel like they were overloading us, everything got its own story, which I think was a really great thing about going back to Kara Major's pacing, is that everything that debuted got its own story, whether it was big or small, which made them more memorable. Like even the auxiliaries got stuff like the shovel corpse that made them memorable. And I liked that, you know? That's a problem I have with some modern Sentai and Rider, especially going alongside Saber, is it feels like so many things are so disposable, and the new things being introduced doesn't feel as exciting or special. And I love that everything in this had a story, but there wasn't too many things. It felt like the amount of things that would debut in a normal Sentai series back when I first got into it. I feel like a back in my day type of person right now. But not that there hasn't been good elements and good series in the more modern series, but I feel like for the most part in recent years there's been a shift in the way Sentai feels, where it feels more often than not they're just shrieking in my face and throwing toys at my head. And this series really took me back to when just the right amount of stuff debuted and there was just the right amount of toys to collect and they had enough stories about them that I was interested in getting them and it felt so well balanced and it felt like a classic Sentai experience where it was like almost a throwback to those type of times which is why I think I liked it so much and like I said at the beginning it was just it's terribly well balanced and I can't recommend it enough I think it's going to be one of my more go-to series when people ask like what do you want to, to recommend to me when I get into Sentai because it's a really well balanced series series of what to expect from a good Sentai series in my opinion. It had great characters, great cast, great story. It didn't overload you with too many things. I thought the designs were great and kind of in the classic Sentai wheelhouse. So I loved this series. Um, I definitely recommend you check it out. I don't know why you would have watched this whole video of me talking about it if you hadn't seen it because there's a lot of spoilers and stuff. But I definitely recommend you checking it out. Um, I personally, I'm going to be generous for this. I'm not saying it was a perfect series, but I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5. It was just, like I said for the video title, a modern classic. It just, it was such a good unexpected surprise that really took me back to why I liked Sentai in the first place. Place and kind of took me out of some of the more modern loud stuff that I don't like which is I feel like what we might be heading into for Zenkaiger. But what did you guys think of Kara Major? Let me know in the comments as always. Until next time, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can make sure to my videos. Dawson Rider, signing out.